Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and in this video that's a little bit different approach I want to just go over all type of research we did over time as basically on my channel as you know there is a lot of videos I upload quite frequently what makes it a little bit harder for some of you to find answers for questions you are looking for and therefore I decided to make this video when I will go very quickly over the knowledge we tested and was shared in the videos and give you just a quick summary what was our discoveries from videos in the past what is still up to date then you will know that info from this video is up to date. You will don't need to think about that. And if you will need more information, I will try to link this information on the video, like in the corner, you will just click on the link and you will be able to watch a full video. And uh, let's start. And maybe I will go from the newest one going towards the oldest one. And first we have covered scout armor and quick info from me will be here. Yes, it is the best armor for stealth, it's passive effect, do stack with shadow armor mod and it's working during the day and night. And yes, that's the best stealth armor. Next, we did test an arm versus slugger and those are quite close, but still unarmed is winning. Of course, if you are not using power armor, unarmed is still on the lead, it's still the strongest, although Two-handed is not so far behind and as it used to be in the past, then that's worth considering if you like two-handed weapons. And here we have weapon condition and we are testing it basically how crafting with different level of intelligence affect the weapon condition. And yes, intelligence affected quite significantly. Plus on top of everything, it seems to be slightly randomized. Therefore, even if you craft with the same amount of intelligence, the amount of condition, the how long the bar is, can be slightly different. Then basically what you need to know from in here, craft with as high intelligence as possible. Then we analyze full guide to stacking different type of buffs and what you can take as a shortcut. There's a lot of exceptions and stuff stacking with each other that shouldn't, but general rules are that you can have one alcohol active, one chem, one bubble head, one magazine, and multiple buffs from food and drink category. That will be a quick summary for you. If you want more details, as you can see, this video is over 20 minutes long at how much it took me to try to explain all those possible combinations. And here, better critical spec. We're analyzing it. I was doing the test in this video, a quick test with stealth, without stealth, and how it affects and how it works on the enemies and it happened to be quite good, better than it was expected. Like assume it will not be so good, but in practice it was quite good. On top of that, later on, we discovered that criticals can bypass damage mitigation on bosses like Scorch Beast Queen or Mr. Air. Then this card is even better on bosses. And here, reload speed. We are testing all type of buffs that you can have affecting your reload speed, like speed demon, perks giving reload speed, magazines increasing reload speed. And after testing, it happened that they do stack indeed all of them. There is no limit. There is no cap how fast you can reload. As many buffs as you can apply, they will all work. And here we have video discussing limb damage. It was a test done by me and conclusion is it doesn't affect your overall damage. It only helps you cripple the limb faster. Then if you want to see the full testing, there's the video. And here's another video about VAT's hit chance and we are going over the secrets of Sweetwater Special Blend and basically if you want to know what the secret is, you can use it with party boy, party girl per cut under charisma. And if you are a herbivore, it will add on top of everything. Plus, if you are on a team with strange in numbers equipped, you can go into plus 15 perception from this one single drink and it lasts for an hour. Here's the video about the syringes. We're doing the guide about Karma Syringer and Endangerous Syringe. And it happened, the conclusion is Karma Syringe is working as intended, helping you a little bit, but 
and then Gerald's syringe, for whatever reason is working on reverse, instead of reducing enemy armor, whoever you shoot with it, it gives him armor penetration. Then, that's a surprise. Here's a super tank video. This one you probably know, it has a lot of views, still up to date. Basically, from this video you will learn that way more important than your damage resistance, energy resistance and other resistance stats is to have as many as possible damage mitigation perks, like percentage-wise reducing your damage taken. Here's full video if you want full details and if you want to be almost immortal. You can be a super tank, everyone can be a super tank. The best heavy gun to kill Colossus, that was a summary made after a series of video in we're testing candidates to be the best versus Colossus and whatever the reason was, Flamer was doing way more damage than anticipated. Then if you want to fight the Colossus, Flamer is amazing weapon. Like performance was insanely good. If you want to see a full comparison with other heavy guns we tested, it's in this video. And here's the video about bug detective and it was related to fast travel bug. And we were testing some stuff that can affect it. And summary from this video is that Whenever you have effect on you that keeps healing you, like for example, healing factor mutation or food that gives you a constant health regeneration, it can interfere with your fast travel and it will be either like instantly canceled or just nothing happened when you click. That's one of the many reasons, but it's the easiest one to fix. You just don't use any of those. And here is bug detective video, another one. This time that's critical bug, because if you don't know, sometimes when you shoot really fast with automatic weapons in VATS and you hold your critical button, the damage numbers that are popping on the screen are not reflecting any criticals happening and there is no sound. But we did a test actually observing how fast we can kill enemies holding crit button or not holding crit button and it seems that even though it's not showing in damage numbers it does work that's criticals always work even if it seems like they don't they do work and next to this video is grenadier with tesla we did the test and for whatever reason the grenadier per card affects how far tesla can arc from the initial point you hit then it's a cool combo, try it if you never did before. Here's another episode of Tartus Lab and we are comparing Ironclad with Life Giver for both full health builds and low health builds, like Bladit. And in both cases, Life Giver was a clear winner. You can see if you don't believe me. And another good one, full test of the minigun with a shredder mode and just a quick recap to use it. You need to have zero ammo, absolutely zero ammo for Shredder to work and it does some insane damage. It doesn't work with all the perks, there are some exceptions, but it does work with a basher perk and basher mod. Then yeah, if you need more details, you need to see how exactly the damage is calculated for this gun. You can check it out, but this is insanely good weapon when used as a melee. Here's just a quick reminder about the technical data if you don't know you should deliver it one by one and you can achieve that by storing all excess amount of technical data in your stash box before giving it out. Otherwise it will be all consumed and you don't really get any better chance for unique cosmetics or plants. The true endgame gear and this video is about a torn armor set and fast automatic melee weapons. This is really cool if you want to see it but basically the bleed damage can be stuck upon each other with use of those weapons up to some insane amount. A video on the left, you can even see that I went after Mr. L with this setup and I will give you a spoiler, we did kill him. And another Tartu Lab test for a melee builds, weighted versus brawling, and in regard of armor mods. And just to summarize, in the past brawling was crazy good but it was heavily nerfed and at this moment weighted tend to be slightly better, especially on bosses, but both of those mods are not great. They do work, they are not great. 
We are like six months in the past, but this video is still up to date. Bloody executioners and zealots compared. And basically it happened that for whatever reason, executioners is multiplicative with other buffs. Unlike what we normally have now that everything is additive. Therefore, it can compete and get close to bloodied actually. Executioner on enemies that are below 40% health is the strongest possible legendary effect. And here grenades, in particular floater ones. If you didn't know that about floater grenades, we did a lot of testing, but the most important part is that floater grenades work through the walls. Therefore, if you toss a grenade next to the room and enemies are inside the room, if they will be in range, they will get hit and possibly killed. And here's the big topic. Explosive weapons and how those explosive bullets works. There is a lot to tackle in this topic. As you can see, video is over 20 minutes. Me trying to explain it as well as I can. But now to give you just a quick summary, in case of explosions from whatever source, like explosive weapon, for example, when you hit a target, the distance of this target fit from actual explosion determines how much damage or if any damage will be done as basically explosion is losing damage with wrench and wrench is calculated from enemy feet. Like for example, if you shoot enemy into the head with a gauss weapon, then there will be no explosive damage at all because gauss weapons have very small explosion and fits are too far in most enemies. In this episode of Tartar Lab, we analyze the ricochet perk and it is actually really nice because it not only deflect all the damage, which means you are not taking damage when it triggers, but as well, it does apply, for example, vampire weapon effect, secrets of legacy weapons. Unfortunately, this video is still up to date. I would prefer that Bethesda will fix it, but basically in this video, I go over how it happened that legacy weapons are so powerful and to summarize it for you in case of legacy weapon with a splitter what means energy explosive weapon with a splitter like gatling plasma every single projectile is applying full 100 percent damage explosion armor penetration anti-armor and stuff like that. In this video, I was trying to explain and showcase what does it mean that all those bonuses are multiplicative with each other. Then I cannot summarize it anymore. I just can tell you that they all do work and they are multiplicative with each other. Lack of the draw and combination of this perk with Gunsmith. After extensive testing, we can say that definitely Gunsmith 100% worth using. About lack of the draw, by itself, it was really weak results. In combination with Gunsmith, it's quite good. But generally the value is on Gunsmith, the highest value, and then if you want to improve the durability of the weapon even further, go for lack of the draw. Not on reverse, as it doesn't work really well. And on the right, if you are interested, you can find this one wasteland map video if you want to. There is how the damage is actually calculated in this game in Fallout 76. And tenderizer perk. Even though this video is quite old, nine months old, and since I made it, they actually updated the perk card for a tenderizer. And in this video, you have old values, but in practice, nothing changed. It was always working like today, the card was just not up to date and they updated description, but it's still working like in this video, you can check it out. And to tell you a quick summary, it is better than bloody mess. Still, even though this video was done quite a while back, I think before one wasteland. Is there a cap for sneak and cap to agility, cap to other bonuses? That is the question that was asked quite often and I decided to test it in this video, like took me over 14 minutes to go over all the possible bonuses and trying to apply them. The quick summary is that you can see some diminishing return when more and more is added, 
but there is certainly no cap on your stealth. Therefore, you can keep boosting your stealth to your heart content. There is no cap. Empath mutation test. That's quite significant knowledge in this video. To give you a quick summary what you need to know, the empath mutation is a very specific mutation because it does say that you are taking more damage and your teammates are taking less damage. But as long as you have at least one teammate, empath mutation is beneficial for you. Full test in the video. And another big one. It was made a year ago, but still full up today. How the item and enemies respawn and spawn works. It's not easy to put and give you a quick summary, but you need to know that your game save, the file that is kept on the server with your character and everything, is tracking up to 255 items that you interacted with in the world, what means if you loot, for example, golf club and then hope the server, you end up on the new server, you go into the golf club, none of those items will spawn for you because you have them on your looted list. They will not spawn for you. Although if someone else will enter this area, like let's say 10 minutes later, because 10 minutes is a cooldown for spawns and respawns, they can appear. And there is more in-depth info in the videos. This quick summary will not conclude all the possible combinations. And the last one for this video, guys, super duper and legendary crafting. Does it work or not? And answer is the perk seems to trigger. There is the sound, but it doesn't work. You will not get double legendaries then. That's the answer for you. That's the last one, the easy one. And we are over a year of videos and all the important ones I think I listed in here for you. All the knowledge compressed. I know it can be a little bit much, but if someone will be asking you a lot of questions about Fallout and how the stuff works, you can just give him this video. He can watch it and he will know. And that's all I have for you. Let me know what you think about this video. Is Do you feel like it's useful or everyone already knows that and this video is not really useful? I'm not really sure about this one. I hope it's useful, but you will tell me. And now as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.